Up next, our second item on the Sunday Six is the dream that is not dying in the District of Columbia. The Washington Commanders crush the Cleveland Browns 34-13. I mean, they were favored in this game. Not saying it's crazy that they won, but an absolute drubbing by a Commanders team that is now 4-1 and one for just the first time since 2008. Had a chance to catch up with our guys, Jason Benetti and Greg Olson, about another impressive Washington win. All right, so every week people are waiting for Washington to not win again, right? For the mirage to stop. I don't think it's a mirage anymore. No, I mean, you're, like you said, you're waiting on them to come back down to earth. And right now they're riding a hot young rookie quarterback who's playing as well as any quarterback in the league, rookie or not. They've got great play callers. They've got great leadership with Dan Quinn. This thing's starting to resemble a real, a real potential team here. And uh, we talked a lot during the game. That, week, that matchup next week against the Ravens, I feel bad saying it because every week we say, oh, we're going to learn a lot about these right. commanders. They just continue to perform and perform. That's matchup, I don't know, before the season if anyone had that one circled. But right now, that's one of the better games next week. Yeah, they win 34-13 today against Cleveland. Where does Cleveland go from here? They've got, they've got a lot of tough decisions to make right now. They, they've got to figure out, they've got to go back and have very honest conversations amongst the coaches, amongst the players, the leadership of this team. And they need to say, okay, guys, what we're doing is not working. It's broken. There is no positive that we can hang our hat on as an entire football club here. And there's going to be some guys that have to face the music. There's going to be some guys that's performances and attitudes and body language and preparation. All of those things are on the table. So... It, it, this this seems like it's a bit at a crossroads right now for this Browns organization and Kevin Stefanski and his leadership group. They've got to come up with some answers and they got to come up here fast. They fall 34-13 Washington over Cleveland today. Ironically, this was probably Jaden Daniels' worst performance of this incredible rookie season. He completed just 56% of his passes, committed a red zone turnover. I hear you, Washington fans. I don't. I don't think that was actually an interception by Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa on the goal line, but wasn't reviewed. Officially stands as a red zone turnover for Jaden Daniels. Even if this was technically his quote unquote worst performance, that speaks to how incredible this guy has been through the first five weeks of his rookie season. Than anything. 320 all-purpose yards on the day. Gorgeous deep ball touchdown to Deami Brown. More importantly. And again, we knew the efficiency wouldn't be otherworldly forever. Obviously, the commanders would have to punt. They'd have to settle for fuel goals eventually. But even still, on a day where the Browns made life a little more difficult than what we've seen the last two weeks, Jaden Daniels led the, uh, led the commanders to points on six of ten possessions before the commanders pulled him with 12 minutes left to play in the game. That's just not supposed to happen in the NFL. Speaks to the level of dominance we saw in this game. Had a chance to catch up with Jaden himself about this incredible start. Jaden, I walked by a fan who said, we got us a football team. A lot of hope here in this area. Tell me what it means to you. It means a lot to go out there um, and compete every Sunday, be able to battle um, through adversity. I mean, we didn't play the cleanest game as an offense. Um, but we still got room to grow, but I love how we finished. Over 30 points in this one, too. Tell me what the next gear looks like if we're doing this already. You got to go back and see what, watch the film. Like I said, we didn't play the cleanest game, but uh, all glory to God for getting us a, the win, allowing us to go out there and persevere. Congratulations. Thank you. Jaden Daniels, the first player in NFL history with 1,000 passing yards and 250 rushing yards in his first five NFL games. An incredible start. I love what Greg Olson said. I mean, I don't think I need to learn anything else about the Washington Commanders. I think this is very real, but man, what a matchup. Washington, Baltimore, just 45 minutes apart, give or take, facing off next Sunday. Already one of the big ones I'm circling for week six. Jaden against Lamar. Can't wait. Quick note on the other side of this. We didn't mention the Cleveland Browns. Greg Olson talked about it. I mean, it is shaping up, if it wasn't already, to be a very uncomfortable week for the Cleveland Browns. Just an abysmal performance, and I'm going to put it completely on the Cleveland offense. Honestly, you look at it, I know they scored 34 points. I know they were very efficient. I thought the Cleveland Browns defense did a good enough job to at least be in this game. They turned the ball over in the red zone. They forced the commanders to settle for field goals and punts. This Cleveland offense is a problem. 
Deshaun Watson, 125 passing yards on the day, sacked seven more times. Yards per attempt, four and a half down there with the absolute worst of the week, ironically, keeping company with Josh Allen and Aaron Rodgers. But those guys having much more consistent success than Deshaun Watson to this point in the season. Kevin Stefanski already said after this game, they're not changing quarterbacks. I get it. The guy is guaranteed $230 million. I suppose you have to find a way to make it work or else admit that you made the worst trade in NFL history. But man, I worry about the vibes of this Cleveland team. Three losses in a row. The one win on the season against Jacksonville, a very, very ugly one where they only scored 18 points. They still have not scored 20 points in a game as we head in to week six of the NFL season. It feels very, very bad. If the Browns don't want to make a change at quarterback, that's their prerogative. But at some point, I think you run the risk of losing the locker room if you can't more consistently score points. Feels really dicey in Cleveland. I'm interested to see where this goes, particularly if the Browns are committed to Deshaun Watson the way they say they are.